Hello and welcome to today's uh, camper van chat and today I am in the Dreamer Catland 534cm in length camper van it's got a tent in the roof but as you can see it's down behind me you can see the kitchen in the in this van you might want to call it a car I've been thinking uh, what I should really call it. It's based on the Ford Transit Custom. And so you think Ford Transit, well, that's a van. It's not a car, so we'll call it a, um, we'll call it a van. It's a, I like the French word, actually. Uh, it's comping car, but that means all motorhomes as a, a, in general, uh, RVs, uh, well, not caravans, of course. So uh, a camping car, I think is a good word in English. I might even start saying it, although I do appreciate there may be some problems there with the French word. Now, uh, what I want to do today is to address a... Um, a question I got on uh, in the uh, comment section related to fuel consumption. So this is actually doing this for Mike. And I said for Mike, I'll do a video response to what he said. Now, uh, I've heard people say in the past, ask me questions on uh, MPG. That means miles per gallon or uh, you can call it, say, for example, kilometers uh, to a 100 litres, which is uh, the way it's uh, done in uh, outside of the English speaking world and to make it a little bit more complicated there's a difference between the a gallon in the UK as in the US now uh, so uh, but I'm not going to go into measurements so uh, no problem on that one now when I was in the United States I was really amazed at how cheap fuel is it's half the price it is here in Europe uh, one difference, though, is this is that diesel will cost in the US approximately, very approximately 20% more, something along those lines. Whereas in Europe, it is in general cheaper. There was a time when diesel, for example, in France and Italy was about 25% cheaper. I don't think that's the case any longer. And in, But indeed, in most countries in Europe, diesel is cheaper. In the UK... It, and in Switzerland, it's slightly more expensive, but only only just a touch, not not a not a huge amount. And in fact, indeed, there have been times when the cost of diesel has gone across uh, above the cost of petrol. Uh, or as the United States, they say gas. But of course, I find that com complicated because gas is then what we call LPG, and that's what you use for cooking with. Or occasionally, you may use it to run your petrol engine in because LPG gas is half the price of petrol and it only takes about 20% more to run the engine, the motor. So having said all that, it is my opinion that if you're talking of a motorhome, um, that the cost of the fuel is really a tiny percentage of what the overall cost of the vehicle may be and I admit that part of my dislike for the uh, overcab models has been I've always thought oh well the fuel uh, is going to take 15% more fuel to run the thing but uh, let's try and think of this a little bit more logically indeed the reason why I find myself today in this van is because this was the cheapest van I could think of to actually fill myself inside uh, because this is uh, not the cheapest uh, to buy but the cheapest in running costs I dare say the fuel on this you're probably getting oh dear I don't know what it is miles per gallon but I would have thought you get six and a half to seven liters per hundred kilometers and something maybe even less in something like that I don't know how much is miles per, per gallon since I've stopped using it now anyway so if you think that okay you're going to do 10,000 kilometers a year in your motorhome for argument's sake and uh, the cost of that is what 10,000 let's see you're running 10 liters per 100 kilometers so there's 100 liters for a thousand so it's a thousand liters you're going to use and even uh, it's uh, the prices the price difference as it was before uh, it's not really significant. I mean, the cost of putting a me metallic paint on the outside 
or getting an engine upgrade or having an automatic gearbox it's it's really far greater than the uh, cost of this miles per gallon or kilometers or the fuel consumption in general indeed i do appreciate that uh, when the in the united states uh, coming back to to the us you, um whereas the fuel is cheaper people got bigger engines so they're using far more fuel and um this it, this this is a problem so when you for example i've seen big motorhomes which are running on petrol i mean the the cost of that i mean is is absurd really so um here i've never seen a motorhome on petrol i have seen one or two camper vans running on petrol and indeed there have been new ones but they're the hybrid types death Lev's brought out a hybrid type which runs on petrol and on electricity now, if you are on, in a car, that'd be totally different. And if you need a car to get to work and you're going to do far more kilometers than you do in a motorhome, then yes, I absolutely agree that uh, uh, fuel consumption would be top of the list of considerations for me. Indeed, if I were sort of going to work uh, in the car, uh, I would be running an electric car. That I am absolutely 100% certain. But, 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 <laughs> if we're talking of motorhomes, then, uh, then no. Now, what about the electric motorhome? When is that going to come in? We've got electric cars, we've got electric cars. I was in a smart car the other day here in uh, Lunen, uh, where I'm at at the moment in Germany. And uh, that can do 180 kilometers on one, uh, on one charge. And uh, the city authorities here allow people to charge free of charge. So um, that's great. The electric motorhome is a long way off still. I mean, I know I've done videos on them. Uh, there is one company uh, which uh, brought out at, um, at CMT Trade Fair in 2019, if I remember right, rightly. Uh, a, 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 and, but as far as I understand the situation, they haven't sold a single one. Not one. Uh, there are electric vans running around the streets uh, with companies such as um, DHL or other courier companies. I think it's DHL. I might, UPS, I think it is, maybe. Uh, they, they're using electric. But that's different because then they're running around the streets and they can take the thing back home at night and charge it. And according to a study by Renault, there are most people uh, who are using it for in, 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 in a city use. Uh, such as the courier companies or uh, even even delivery companies then they're only using about 80 kilometers a day so that that that's fair enough you can take it back and give it a charge uh particularly as, if you find a place like lunan where the uh the charges uh doesn't cost anything to actually load uh charge up your your vehicle so the thing is this if you've got a range of let's say 150 let's say 200 even this one that was brought up by um elektrofahrzeug stuttgart or they, they built the motor for it even with that uh, a range of 400 um are people going to pay the extra 60 70 80 thousand euros to actually get that i i i I think perhaps not. I think they'd rather spend 80,000 euros on diesel. So uh, as things stand with the current technology, I don't think we're going to see electric vans for some time. Now, my argument in favour of electric was the following. Uh, electric motorhomes, I mean, by that, sorry. Uh, my argument was always the following. is that, uh, I, For example, myself, I tend not to do great long journeys in one go unless I really have to. I'll keep stopping. And now I'm traveling between Dusseldorf and Lublin, a distance of some, I'd say off the top of my head, about 1,300 kilometers maybe. Uh, but um, I'm just stopping off so often that it's it won't be, um, uh, it's all in small chunks. I could do this uh, in an electric van. But I think that most people, if they're going to do a motorhome tour, for example, if they leave from here in Germany or in the UK and then they go down or even from the northern United States and drive to California or uh, uh, Florida or here, they'll be driving to Spain, for example, then it's that first initial chunk. And if you've got to keep stopping every uh, two hours to charge your van up, which is going to take at least 45 minutes on a fast charge, 
then at least, I said at least, at least, not the word, because I mean, you can't just put in the slow charge, these big vans that take two days to charge them up, then I don't really think that that is such um, a realistic proposition. I know that's slightly different than what I said before, but the um, I've had time uh, to sort of reconsider my posi position. I really do believe in electricity as a, um, as a better alternative, better than diesel. Uh, thing is that diesel at the end of the day it's easy to put in the van it there's fuel stations all over the place and it is still uh comparative it's <laughs> comparatively economical and it gives all this power uh in the the calorific content is really good and then we come on next thing how are you going to heat a van for example you can't heat electric it's impossible uh, and it's likely to be impossible for quite some time yet so, um, coming back to the question, do I think that miles per gallon, kilometers, uh, liters per uh, 100 kilometers, do I think it's valid? No, I don't. I certainly wouldn't think of it unless it was really big difference. And when will electric vans come in? The answer is I don't know. Electric motorhomes, sorry. So, Thanks very much for listening. It's very nice to have you here and to be with me. And uh, I've got lots of stuff here that I've filmed uh, on this journey here. I'm now at um, Reisemobil Hartmann in Luden, as I said. They do uh, Rapido uh, brands such as this one here. This is a Dreamer. They do Itineo. They do uh, Fleurette. And uh, I've been putting up a lot of, uh, of these vehicles during my stay here. And I've done this specially for one reason. And the reason is that you can ask questions in the comment section whilst I'm here. And if I don't know the answer, I've got someone to ask because usually I don't have anybody. All the best from Lunen, Germany. Thank you.